Hi everyone. So this week we're going to be doing a suffering in exile part two. It doesn't sound very awesome, <laughs> but it's actually very, very uh, hopeful. So God bless all of you. You're in our prayers and see you soon. Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to another episode of How to Live While in Exile, and we are continuing our conversation about suffering. And today, I just want to ask the question, how are you doing? How are you doing in exile? How are you feeling? Can we just all take a deep breath for a moment? Like, just take a deep, long, deep breath. Breathe in through nose. Breathe out to mouth. How are we feeling? This is a really tough time and there's a lot of things that we're going through and we are asked to endure and get through without a lot of explanation of how or why. Tell me why. And today I want to talk about where is God in all of it? Where is God in the suffering? Because in the past we talked about God's abundance and his goodness and that he's got good things for us at the end of the tunnel. But that doesn't necessarily help us in the darkest moments of the tunnel. <laughs> The moments that we feel filled with anxiety. The moments we feel that we are really struggling to get through this day. The moments where I could just get really angry at my brothers and sisters and pull my hair or their hair out because I'm just really frustrated. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> the moments that I don't want to listen to mom or dad because I'm just tired of doing what they always ask me to do. The moments where I find I want to put myself into my room and shut the door and not talk to anybody because it would just seem like a better option. Leave me alone to die. Those are the moments where God wants to meet us and I want to talk about his, his being there with us. I'd like to illustrate how God is with, with us in a moment of Jesus's life that was incredibly difficult and at the same moment, he knew who he was and what he was going to do. And that's the story of, of Lazarus, his friend. And if you remember the story, it says that Jesus was about a two days journey away from Lazarus. A messenger came and said to Jesus, your friend is sick. Uh, uh, I'm sick. In fact, Martha and Mary, they're sisters of Lazarus. They say in the message, the one whom you love is sick. And what happens? Jesus chooses to stay where he is for two more days. And when he gets to the place of Lazarus, Martha and Mary meet him and they are, you can imagine, if, you're, if your brother has died, they're filled with grief. They're filled with sadness and anger and bitterness. But Jesus shows up and what's amazing is that he, he lets them be who they are. Martha runs up and she's like, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And he says, where's Mary? And so Martha goes and gets Mary. And what does Mary say? Same thing. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He allows them to get angry. I am furious with him. Now, we don't know. It doesn't say that they were angry, but you can sort of imagine if that was you and you knew Jesus could heal and he didn't show up. You can imagine the anger, the sadness. And you can hear that in that line. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And it's all your fault. And Jesus allows them to be sad and angry. He allows us to feel what we're feeling and to speak to him like that. If I'm angry, I can be angry with the Lord because he's big enough to take it. If I'm sad, I can be sad with the Lord. I'm so sad right now. And then he responds. Have we asked God how he's responding to this pandemic? Because many of us may say, well, if God existed, he wouldn't let it happen. But why don't you just ask him, how does he feel in this? Talk about how you feel. Do you think he rejoices? I think he, I think he's pained by it. I think that, I think there's sorrow in God. Because what happens in the story with Martha and Lazarus is that Jesus walks up. Martha and Mary meet him. They come to him with their pain and their sorrow and their anger and their bitterness. And what, how does Jesus respond to them? The shortest verse in the Bible is this. Jesus wept. He wept at the loss of his friend. Jesus doesn't just accept us in our emotion. He enters into them with us. He enters into our weeping. He enters into our anxiety. When crisis situations, I have these anxiety attacks and I hyperventilate and I pass out for a moment. The anxiety of Martha and Mary, he enters into. The anxiety of not being with friends, he enters into. The anxiety of not having a graduation or vacation or, or at the end of school like I normally would, he enters into that. You may 
enter. What does it mean that he enters into it? It means that when we are in our room anxious, he's there with you. When I'm sad that I don't get to see my friends, he's with me. He's with you. If you're sad that you don't get to go to prom, that your senior year isn't what you expected it to be or wanted it to be. I wasn't expecting that. He's with you. He holds you. He cries with you. If you don't believe me, I encourage you to try it. Tell him how you're feeling and wait. Martha and Mary tell him how they're feeling and then they wait and they see that Jesus weeps with them. He loves you and cares about you too much to not weep with you. He loves and cares about you too much to not be sad with you. Share with him your struggle, share with him your pain, share with him your suffering, and allow him to be sad with you. That's where we find comfort. That's where we find peace. That's where we find God. I encourage you to grab a friend, grab a family member, and start talking about it. Shark bait! Hoo ha To the shore, I can think of things I've never thought before. This is how you know quarantine has gone on too long. When you start drawing faces on dodgeballs and you name them Monsignor Wilson. Oh, I could tell you why the ocean's near. Surprise! I would like to explicate for just a momentary consumption of the time. There is confirming with the flowers, consultant with the rain. See y'all next week.